everybody. Welcome preschoolers to our week two of Bible Lessons with Miss Megan. And as you can see, she's here with us today. And we are practicing our social distancing. And we're glad that you're here with us again today. Last week, if you remember, we talked about Jesus and he was, what was he doing? He was washing our feet. This week, we are going to have a special treat, and we're going to learn about Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem. So, with no further waiting, let's get over to Miss Megan. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be back with you this week, but I miss you guys so much. I can't wait till we can be all back together again. But until then, we'll keep doing these lessons so that you can watch church at home and you can even participate. Remember last week, we learned that God gives us new life. Really, it's Jesus. Jesus gives us new life. And do you remember what you were supposed to do? That's right. Clap, clap, clap. And we're going to add on to that today. But first... We need to pray. That's right. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for all our blessings. Please protect us and keep us safe and help us to have a great lesson. In your name we pray. Amen. Good job, guys. All right, let's get our Jesus hands ready so that we can sing Jesus Loves Me. You ready? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Great job. I sure love when we sing all together like that, even when we're far apart. You know what, guys? This week has been really weird for me and my family. Has it been a little bit different for you guys, too? I understand. Maybe our moms and our dads have been home a lot more than usual, and our brothers and sisters. And a good side of that is that we get to spend lots of time with our families. And I sure love that at my house. But at the same time, it's kind of weird that we're really not supposed to go places right now. And people are even telling us that, that it's not safe to go places. And sometimes things like that can sound a little bit scary, especially when we don't know what's going on. So I've been wondering and wondering about, you know, what all this means and this virus that people are talking about, and it can be a little bit scary. And I've had all of these questions that I didn't know what to do with. But then I remembered that I have a very special book, my answer book, that I can always go to and find answers for life's questions, the hard questions that we don't have answers to. My answer book has all the answers. You want to know a secret? It's not really called answer book. I just put that on there because what it really is, is our Bible, the Holy Bible. That's right. It has all the answers that we need. So I was feeling a little bit scared and a little bit worried and maybe a little bit anxious and I didn't know what to do with that. And so I looked in the Bible about what it says about being scared. And I found in 2 Timothy 1, 7, 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, I'm reading it right out of my big girl Bible. For God did not give us a spirit of fear or of being scared, but a spirit of power. Isn't that cool? Our answer book tells us how we can handle this, that we don't need to be scared of this virus or of staying home. God has blessed us with mommies and daddies and leaders in our community and doctors who are telling us how to handle this. And no matter what happens, we have a God who has all the answers. So even if one or two of us ends up getting a little bit sick, God has all of that taken care of too. He knows how he's going to handle it, and we don't need to be worried or scared because God has all the answers for us. Praise him. 
Last week, we started learning about how Jesus gives us new life. Great job! And we decided that we would point out that or make it extra special by every time we hear it, we'll clap. So when you hear me say, Jesus gives us new life, good job. You clap, clap, clap to let everybody know that that's what we're learning about. Super job. And we know that because of our Bible verse. Did you guys practice your Bible verse this week? It's from 2 Corinthians 5.17, and it says, believing in Jesus makes me a new person. It's worded a little bit different than the one we're clapping for, but it means pretty much the same thing. Listen again. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, believing in Jesus makes me a new person. Be my echo. Believing in Jesus makes me a new person. Second Corinthians 5.17. One more time, be my echo. Believing in Jesus makes me a new person. Second Corinthians 5.17. Good job, try it with me. Let's do it all together two times. Believing, ready? Believing in Jesus makes me a new person. 2 Corinthians 5.17. One more time. Believing in Jesus makes me a new person. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Great job, guys, learning that Jesus gives us new life. Did I trick you? Or are you clap, 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 clapping? Good job, guys. You're doing great already. Okay, so last week when we were learning that Jesus gives us new life, I snuck it in there again, didn't I? We learned that when he gives us this new life, it will make us want to serve others. And we talked about how Jesus served others by what he did lots and lots of things to serve others. But last week we talked about the story where he washed his disciples' feet. Now, you probably don't wash anybody's feet this week, except your own. I hope you washed your own. But did you find ways to help other people, to serve other people like Jesus did? I hope so. And keep that up. Just because we're moving on this week doesn't mean we stop serving others. Because when Jesus gives us new life, we want to keep serving others. Now, this week, we're going to learn about how when Jesus gives us this new life... We want to praise him because our life is different. We feel better on the insides, and we know that when our life here is over, we'll get to go to heaven with him. So there's so many reasons to be filled with joy that it makes us want to praise him. So that's what we're learning about this week. Last week, we learned about serving him by serving others, and this week, we're going to learn about praising him. Great job, and we're going to start with a rhyme like last week, and I'm going to do it first for you, and then you'll be my echo, okay? Ready? Listen to the happy crowd. Shout praise God clear and loud. See the branches swing and sway as the Lord Jesus comes this way on a donkey. Oh, my son told me to do this. On a donkey. He said my donkey was funny, guys. On a donkey, furry and brown, Jesus rides right into town. Shout praise God. Jesus is our king forever. Good job. Okay, you ready to be my echo? All right. Listen to the happy crowd. Shout praise God clear and loud. See the branches swing and sway as our Lord Jesus comes this way on a donkey, furry and brown. Jesus rides right into town. Shout praise God all together. Jesus is our king forever. Great job. You want to do it all together? This one was a little longer than last week, but just do your best, okay? Listen, do it with me. 
Listen to the happy crowd. Shout praise God clear and loud. See the branches swing and sway as our Lord Jesus comes this way. On a donkey, furry and brown, Jesus rides right into town. Shout praise God all together. Jesus is our king forever. Great job, guys. And that's going to tell us about our Bible story. But before I start, I wanted to talk about a couple of the things in our story. Now, did you hear what it said in our rhyme that the people were, or what was swinging and swaying? That's right. It was branches. Well, look what I brought with me today. Look at this, boys and girls. This is a palm branch. I think some people call them palm fronds. It's kind of a funny word. We'll just call it a palm branch. But when Jesus was coming into the city of Jerusalem, it was almost like a parade. The people were so happy to see him because they knew all the great things that he had done. And they were so excited that they were praising him and they were taking the branches and going like this. When Miss Megan was moving up and down, they were actually taking branches and waving them up and down in a way to praise Jesus. Isn't that so cool? Yes. And then Miss Megan brought her um, decor. It's really just a decoration, but you can see Jesus and you can see some of the people actually have their palm branches. They're not giants like Miss Megan's are, but they have their palm branches and you can see how they were waving them when Jesus was riding into the city, almost like a parade, except he was the only one in it because he was the most special of all. Now, our rhyme also told us how Jesus was getting into the city, into the town, and our Jesus kind of gives us a hint. What was he riding on? That's right, a donkey, and this is my donkey today, my little clip-flop donkey, and that's what Jesus rode on, and the Bible tells us that that's what he was going to ride on. It's a prophecy, and it tells us that that's what the king was going to come into town on, on a donkey, and we have our Jesus right here riding on this donkey. Okay, boys and girls, I think that makes us ready for our Bible story today. And as you know, our Bible stories always come out of the Bible, the real Bible, God's holy word. And this week, our story comes out of Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. This is Miss Megan's big Bible, and there it is right there. But we have our big book out today to help us with the Bible story. It says, one day Jesus told two of his disciples to go into town and find a young donkey that was tied up. Jesus said, bring the colt to me. A young donkey would be a colt. If anyone asks you why you are taking it, say, the master needs it. The two disciples found the donkey and brought it to Jesus. And that takes us to this page where Jesus is writing on it, just like we talked about in our rhyme. So we are going to pick up with our Bible story today, and my donkey, Bray, is going to get to tell the story. Isn't that neat? Did you know donkeys could talk? Well, they can't talk like we can, but they do talk, and they make a very funny noise. Do you know what it sounds like? Some of you knew. It kind of sounds like, hee-haw, hee-haw. Can you make that noise? Hee-haw, hee-haw. That's right. That's the noise that Bray makes, and it is very silly. And today, while Bray is telling the story, whenever he says, hee-haw, I want you to hee-haw too. So every time Bray says, hee-haw, I want you to say, hee-haw, hee-haw, and put up your donkey ears. Okay, so if Bray says something like, Hi, my name is Bray, and I'm a donkey. Hee-haw! Then you should say, Hee-haw! Hee-haw! Right after him. Can you do that? Good job. Hello, boys and girls. I'm a donkey, and my name is Bray. Hee-haw! Good job. I'm the most special donkey in the whole world. Do you know why? Because I got to carry Jesus on my back. Hee-haw! Let me tell you about it. One day, I was standing outside my master's house. We lived on a quiet street in a little village, so I wasn't used to seeing many strangers. But all of a sudden, two men untied me and started to lead me away. 
Why are you untying that donkey? asked the man who lived next door. The Lord needs it, the strangers answered. We'll bring it back soon. Okay, said the neighbor. So the two men led me away. I wondered where they were taking me. I gave a tiny little hee-haw to let them know I was scared. But they patted me and talked to me quietly, and then I felt better. Soon we met a man they called Jesus. Jesus had the kindest face I'd ever seen. Hee-haw! He patted me gently, and I rubbed my nose against him. That's how a donkey says, I like you. Jesus' friends spread their coats on my back. The coats felt soft and warm. Then Jesus sat on my back. That was a surprise. No one had ever sat on me before. I shifted my feet and said, hee-haw. Then Jesus stroked my neck and spoke to me in a soft voice. I twisted my head around to look at Jesus. He looked so kind and wonderful that I decided to give him the best, most gentle ride that I could. As Jesus and I started down the road, other people came with us. As we got closer to Jerusalem, more and more people came along. Soon there was a big crowd of happy people on both sides of the road. They loved Jesus, I could tell. They waved branches as we passed by and shouted, Hosanna, praise God. Sometimes I joined in with a great big hee-haw. Some of them even laid their coats in the road to make a nice path for us. I stepped very carefully. I was proud to carry Jesus. I could tell Jesus was someone special, and I was glad to be a part of Jesus' special day. Bray, that was such a great story. Thank you so much. Hee-haw! We'll put Bray away. He did a great job telling our story today, didn't he? Do you remember what the donkey did in this story? That's right. He carried Jesus right into the town, the city of Jerusalem. And what were the people doing? Good, they were waving those palm branches like we looked at earlier. And some of them, it said, were even putting their own coats down on the ground for the donkey to walk over to make a nice, clean path for Jesus. And why were they doing all these things? Yes, because they loved Jesus and they were so excited to see him. How do you think they were feeling, the people? Happy? excited. Good job. They had heard so many stories about the things that Jesus had done, like the way he served others, like we learned last week and how he had healed people and made them well, that they wanted to see and hear Jesus too. And they knew that he was such a wonderful, good, and special man that they wanted to praise him, praise God. And they knew that Jesus gives us new life. Oh, you caught it. It's been a while. And because Jesus gives us new life, good job. We want to praise him too. So we will praise him, praise him. You find opportunities this week from last week's homework. You got to do it again. You want to keep finding ways to help others. And now this week, we're going to add on and find times to praise God. Jesus. Every time something great happens, we can even praise Jesus when things aren't so great, and that makes our hearts feel even better. So anytime you want, you just bust out and praise for Jesus and say, praise God, praise God, any old time. Does that sound like a good idea? Let's do our rhyme again that we learned before. It starts with listen, okay? And that will help us remember to praise God. Start with me. Listen to the happy crowd. Shout praise God clear and loud. See the branches swing and sway as our Lord Jesus comes this way. On a donkey, furry and brown, Jesus rides right into town. Shout praise God all together. Jesus is our king forever. Great job, guys. Let's finish up with singing. 
Do you know that God is near? God is near, God is near. Do you know that God is near and with us all the time? Yes, I know that God is near. God is near, God is near. Yes, I know that God is near and with us all the time. That song, you can sing, that's a great way to praise God is by singing praise songs to him. And that song also reminds us that during this weird, different, kind of crazy time when things aren't the way they usually are, we can remember that no matter how weird and crazy it gets, God is near. He's with us all the time. And he gave us his son and Jesus gives us new life. Great job, guys. Let's close in prayer. Be my echo. Dear Jesus. Thank you for giving us new life. Please help me to continue to find ways. That was a lot. Please help us continue to find ways to help other people and ways to praise you this week. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys and I miss you and I can't wait to see you again.